Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to another Season 7 League of Legends Champion Guide. Today, I'm going to be covering Draven, the Glorious Executioner. Welcome to the League of Draven. Alright, so let's hop right into the Draven Guide by looking at his pros and his cons. So first, Draven is one of the biggest lane bullies out there, and he can bully almost every AD carry in a 1v1. He's also a champion that's fairly easy to farm on because of his spinning axes, which of course also give him some very high DPS. All of this damage combined with the movement speed from his W ability give him some really high snowball potential. Now Draven even has a global ultimate so he can snipe kills from a long range but honestly this is pretty damn hard to do, it does have a long travel time. Either way, it can be done. Finally, Draven's able to 1v1 almost every single AD carry out there and he can even duel assassins. As long as you can use your E ability to stop their gap closers, you can use all of your damage to easily kill them. Now Draven however has no built in escape ability and of course is going to get ganked fairly often. He of course gets a bunch of bonus gold whenever he gets a kill with his adoration stack so when he has a bunch he's going to get ganked. Draven is also a hard to play champion because there's all sorts of things you have to keep track of and he's pretty mediocre if he does fall behind. All in all he is one of the strongest AD carries out there and he is very rewarding but it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to and positioning since you don't have a built in escape ability is pretty damn important. For your masteries you want to go for 18 ferocity and 12 resolve grabbing fervor of battle as your keystone mastery. This is going to give Draven a nice extra chunk of damage and since he does attack pretty quickly it's going to stack really fast as well. For the rest of the masteries in the ferocity side you want to increase your damage as much as possible while also getting some armor penetration and lifesteal. Then going into the resolve side you want to increase your tankiness as much as possible while also getting a little bit of regeneration. You do always have the option of going 12 cunning as well if you do want some returned health whenever you get a kill, but I'm a big, big fan of going resolve. For your rune page, you want to go for attack damage reds, armor yellows, magic resist blues, and attack speed quints. The attack damage and the attack speed is going to make trading and last hitting just a little bit easier, and the armor and the magic resist is going to make you just a little bit more durable. This is the standard rune setup, and I pretty much take it all of the time, but if you do want to add some glyphs of attack speed instead of the magic resist, you can get away with that on Draven. He is a champion that's pretty reliant on snowballing in the early and the mid game, so if you can pull that off with a little bit of attack speed, go for it. For your summoner spells, you want to stick with a normal AD carry setup and get flash and heal. Flash is a 100% requirement on Draven since he's a very squishy AD carry, and you can use it multiple times throughout a single game to save your life. You also have the option of using this offensively to flash on top of somebody, slow them with your stand aside, and then auto attack them until they're dead. Heal is also a requirement since it can be used to save both yourself and your teammates. The bonus movement speed on activation is also great for escaping or chasing if you do need that extra speed boost. Now let's look at your abilities starting with your passive League of Draven which is great for its additional gold whenever you get some kills. When Draven catches a spinning axe, kills a non-champion, or destroys a turret he gains a stack of adoration. In addition, Draven generates two bonus adoration stacks if he kills six non-champions in a row without dropping an axe. When Draven kills an enemy champion, he consumes all of his adoration stacks and gains 25 plus 2 times his stacks bonus gold. Draven loses 75% of his adoration stacks upon death. So that part right there is usually why Draven's ganked a lot when he has a lot of stacks because nobody wants him to cash in so he can start snowballing. That means if you have a lot of stacks, let your jungler or your mid laner know that you need a gank and try to cash in so you can start snowballing in the lane. So yeah, this is a really strong passive and it gets a lot better the better you are at Draven because if you don't drop axes ever, you're going to get a lot of adoration stacks quickly and if you get a kill, you're going to go nuts. Your Q ability is spinning axe and this is your main source of extra damage that's also great at generating those adoration stacks. When activated, Draven starts spinning his axe, causing his next basic attack within 5.8 seconds to deal bonus physical damage. The spinning axe ricochets off the target high up in the air, landing 2 seconds later. If Draven catches the axe, spinning axe is applied for no additional cost on his next attack. Draven can also hold up to 2 spinning axes in his hands at once. So this here is an incredibly strong ability because it does have a scaling bonus AD ratio and it adds a lot of damage onto your basic attacks. As long as you can consistently land these attacks, you're going to have them over and over again and they shouldn't fall off unless you're not near any minions. Using and catching your axes is the main thing that can set good and bad dravens apart and as long as you can pick them up, you're going to have a lot more damage than a normal bad draven. Your W ability is Blood Rush and this is a really solid ability for its bonus attack speed and bonus movement speed. When activated, draven gains bonus attack speed for 3 seconds and bonus movement speed which decays over 1.5 seconds. Catching a spinning axe resets Blood Rush's cooldown. So this here is also a pretty damn solid ability on Draven because you can get up to 40% attack speed and 60% movement speed. As long as you can keep picking up your axes, you're going to be able to use this over and over again, and in team fights, if you do this, you're going to have it up permanently. 
Even though this ability does technically last 3 seconds, the movement speed does decay over 1.5 seconds, so in those team fights and duels, you will want to smash this ability whenever you can, just to have maximum movement speed. Your E ability is Stand Aside, and this is a really nice slow ability that also knocks enemy stopping channels, and of course, jumps towards you. When active, Draven throws his axe in a line, dealing physical damage to all enemies hit, knocking them aside and slowing them for 2 seconds. So since this ability does actually knock people to the side, it will stop things like Katarina's ultimate, so in scenarios where you're against her, make sure you hold on to the ability. This even stops things like Lee Sin's second Q and Zin Zhao's charge. When they are mid-animation to come towards you, make sure you use this ability to knock them aside so they're not going to get on top of you and then destroy them when you're kiting backwards. Since this ability does also slow the enemy, it's also a great way to stick onto enemy champions when you are trying to delete them. I'll usually save this as a defensive ability, but it's also great in offensive situations. Last here we have the ultimate Whirling Death, which is a really solid global ultimate that can do damage to everything in a line. When activated, Draven hurls two Whirling Death massive axes in the target direction dealing physical damage to all enemies struck. Upon reaching the edge of the map, striking an enemy champion or upon the reactivation of Whirling Death, the axes slowly come to a stop before changing direction and returning to Draven, dealing the same physical damage to every enemy struck on the way back. This is a really strong ability because it is global, has a 2000 speed, and of course a 110% bonus AD ratio. This is pretty damn hard to use to snipe people across the map, but it is still really solid damage. I'll usually use this at either the beginning or the end of a team fight because it does have a cast animation, and usually you're going to do more straight up damage by just auto attacking than using this ability. Therefore, I don't really recommend using it mid fight unless you can snipe a target running away. For your skill order, you first want to put a point into your ultimate whenever you can at 6, 11, and 16. You'll then want to focus on maxing your Q ability first because it is your main source of damage and it's great for stacking your adoration. You'll then want to max your W ability second. This gives you a nice chunk of extra attack speed which increases your damage and of course gives you some nice movement speed, increasing your mobility. That of course means you want to save your E ability for last. It is still a really nice slow and knockback so you do need to make sure you take a point early on in it at level 3 so you can actually use it and follow up on people. Now let's look at a couple support synergies and first up is Thresh. Thresh is a really solid champion because he does excel in aggressive lanes, which is where Draven fits in perfectly. You'll want to have Thresh choose your engages and try to flay targets or death sentence them. You can then of course use your spinning axes and your W ability to follow up and do a bunch of damage. He's also really nice in defensive situations because you don't have a built-in escape and he can easily dark passage you out if he is behind you. Next we have Jana, who's a great buffing and shielding support champion that works great with Draven. She can go pretty aggressively with Draven and make sure she adds a lot of damage with her Eye of the Storm, but she can also disengage with him rather easily by using either Monsoon or Howling Gale. As long as she's consistently giving you Eye of the Storm, your axes are going to hit insanely hard. That's pretty much all there is to it, just make sure you trade whenever you have the shield, and she's going to help peel for you throughout the game. Next would be Alistair, who can give you both a bunch of kill potential or some nice peeling. His headbutt into pulverize combo gives him a really solid amount of CC and you're going to be able to follow up and do a bunch of damage while they're stunned. He's also going to give you a nice chunk of healing and a bunch of peel as well so he's a very reliable support champion. Usually you'll want to go pretty aggressive with Alistair but it's not the end of the world if he has to play more defensive and just peel for you. Last year you have Blitzcrank who's going to form a very potent kill lane with Draven. If he can consistently land his rocket grab and then pop enemies up with his E ability and follow that into a silence, you're going to get yourself some very easy kills and you're going to snowball. The one problem with his composition is that you have absolutely no sustain, so if you guys are getting poked down, you're going to have a pretty rough time. Either way, however, one rocket grab can equal a dead carry. During the lane phase, you'll first want to focus on getting as many last hits as possible while also catching your axes. This will get you a bunch of adoration stacks and once you get a kill, you're going to receive a large lump of gold. This is an easy way to get the lane snowballing. You'll next want to focus on harassing the enemy bot lane as much as you can. You are a champion that's very strong in those early 2v2s in the lane phase, so try to abuse your power as much as possible. If you do end up getting some kills, try to follow up with either a tower or a dragon. Your stand aside ability is also great for engaging with your support champion or to stop ganks. You can use this ability to stop some gap closers like Lee Sin's Q, but make sure that you time it right. In teamfights, you'll have to follow the golden rule of playing an AD carry. Attack the targets closest to you, and don't go into the middle of a teamfight. If you do, you're usually just going to get crowd controlled and die pretty damn quickly. In the actual fight, you'll want to be consistently kiting with your blood rush while also catching your spinning axes. When a fight does start, I like to throw my whirling death through as many targets as possible. It's not worth casting usually mid-fight because of the cast time. Finally, you'll usually want to save your stand aside for a way to crowd control an enemy trying to jump on top of you so you can easily peel away and do your damage. 
Now let's look at some of your hard matchups, and first up is Kog'Maw. He's a champion you're usually going to be able to bully in the early and the mid game, but in the late game he is an absolute monster and has a very long attack range and can usually kill you before you can do anything. That means to win this matchup you gotta try to make him miss a lot of farm in the early and the mid game, and if possible, even kill him. If you go into the late game even with a Kog'Maw, you're pretty much just asking to lose. Next here I have Misfortune, who's a champion that's really strong in the early and the mid game, just like you. If you are just trading auto attacks with Misfortune, you will definitely come out on top, so try to do that as much as you can. If she is however poking you with her empowered passive and her bounced Q ability, you're going to easily lose the lane phase. So yeah, the TDLR, auto attack her as much as you can, and avoid her bounce shots. Last here you have Twitch, who's another champion you can bully in the early and the mid game, but in the late game, he's a complete teamfighting monster. You'll need to treat him just like a Kog'Maw, you'll have to bully him in the early and the mid game, and if possible get some kills and get some adoration stacks turned in, and get snowballing. If you get into the late game even with a Twitch, he's going to have a pretty big advantage on you, so make sure you don't get there even. Alright, now let's finish this off with the item build, which starts with a Doran's Blade, Health Potion, and a Warding Totem. If you're against a very, very pokey lane, you could go for a Doran's Shield, but usually you have to kind of all in as Draven, so I definitely prefer the Doran's Blade. For the core build, you have the Death's Dance and the Static Shift. Now, as an alternative, you could get the Bloodthirster, but I definitely prefer the Death's Dance. It is a much stronger item on Draven, in my opinion. By going for the Death's Dance and the Static Shiv, you're going to have a ton of attack damage, nice attack speed and crit, and of course, some lifesteal. For your boot options, if you want to increase your damage, go for the Berserker Greaves, but if you are against a high AD team, then you could get the Ninja Tabbies as a nice defensive. For your item pool, you first have the Infinity Edge. If you are going for a high crit build, this is going to add an absolute ton of damage and make you a monster. Now speaking of that critical strike chance, if you are looking for even more, you can get either the Phantom Dancer or the Rapid Fire Cannon, and they are very solid items because you get even more attack speed. I am a bigger fan of the Rapid Fire Cannon for that increased range on the next attack, but the Phantom Dancer is also very, very solid. Next, if you are against a team with a lot of hard crowd controls, you could get the Mercurial Scimitar. This is a really nice way to add some more attack damage and lifesteal, but also a really solid defensive from that QSS. If you're then looking for some armor penetration, you could get either the LDR or the Mortal Reminder. Both are really solid ways to get through any armor the enemy team might have, and usually I will go for the LDR, but if you do need the Grievous Wounds to reduce healing and whatnot, then of course you have to go for the Mortal Reminder. Then finally, for the final item here, we have the Guardian Angel. This is another great way to add some more attack damage, but it also has a really solid defensive since it gives you armor and also allows you to come back to life after you do die. For my example full build though, I take that core build, some Berserker Greaves, Rapid Fire Cannon, Infinity Edge, and an LDR. The one negative thing here is you don't have a defensive item, but instead you'll do an absolute ton of damage. If you let a Draven go unchecked with a build like this, you're going to get destroyed. And that's everything I've got for AD Carry Draven. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys did enjoy the video, and please also check out the video description below. I have linked to all my social medias, and of course my Twitch and my Discord server as well. If you do need any additional help, please hop into the Discord server. There are many people there that would be glad to help you. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy, have a good day, and peace.